Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I've got the tank review for the brand new tier 9 French premium medium tank, the Char Future 4. Now this is a tank that's just come out, it's 17.5k gold as the base price. It's about 19,000 gold for the top package, bundle, whatever you want to call it. So what do I think of the tank generally? Well, it's a pretty nice medium tank. It's not a world beater, but it's also not a terrible tank. It's it's a quite a lot of fun. It's going to take quite a bit of skill to get the most out of the tank. It has some things that are frustrating and some things that are great. Overall, it's a pretty good tank. Is it worth 17.5k gold? No. Is there anything that's really worth 17.5k gold? No. You're probably best, well I say you're probably best, you are best to just wait for this thing to come on discount. Because no, no, no doubt it will come on discount at some point in the future. Because that is a ridiculous amount of money. And it's good, but it's not that good. <laughs> you know? It's one of those things. Like, So it is a pretty nice tank and it is capable. And I do really like this tank from my playtime in it. So, let's go into the stats of the tank. It's got 264mm of APCR penetration, 330 on the heat rounds, and 53 on the HE. Now, I don't take any HE in this tank because there's no point. The, re the reload's long, the intraclip's long, you're never really going to ha have any use for the HE rounds, and you don't have enough ammo. So, yeah, 264 APCR penetration is absolutely fantastic. That's actually brilliant for a tier 9 medium tank since... There's quite a few. Well, as I say, there's quite a few that have like 220, but obviously they've just buffed stuff like the M46 and the T54 to make that untrue of a lot of the tanks now. But yeah, 264 is really nice. And 330 heat, fantastic. It means you'll pen everything you'll want to ever meet, which is great. 1750 is a nice slab of hit points. That's quite a lot for a tin eye medium. It might be about average for a tin eye medium, but that's great. A 60 km an hour top speed, which is fantastic, and you will reach that. You've got a 380 meter view range, which is not fantastic. There's a lot of the tier 9 mediums that will be going for 400 or 390, but it's still okay. You can put situational awareness and optics on this, and you'll hit good view ranges, so that that's okay. 28% still concealment. Now, the, the camo on this tank is fantastic. If you put a camo net on it, there's so many situations you can stay really stealthy and unspotted. And it really helps with the really long intra clip to be able to stay unspotted while you're dropping your clip. It's really nice. That is something that's fantastic and you want to buff that up with camo perks and the camo net, definitely. It's a very big strength of the tank and it's a really nice feature. So here we go with the other bits of the stats and we've got a 4.4... Four rounds a minute rate of fire, which is a 42 second base reload. It's quite long, but for a 1600 clip, it's actually pretty good. I think this is only sl they've only made this slightly slower reload than PC, but with our gun rammer perk in rapid reload, we actually reload quicker than they can. And it's definitely actually pretty nice. Once you fire the clip, you do feel like you're reloading for a little bit, but it doesn't feel like it's too long. You know what I mean? It's kind of like it's just right. And honestly, it, it's fine. And it's, it's it's quite nice. And having that 1600 damage clip, four shots for 390 alpha, or it's, it's around 1600 damage anyway, is very effective. But it does have a four second intra clip reload. And that is very, very long. Okay, it doesn't say it here. But the four second intra clip reload is a very long intra clip. This is where it will be a pain for some people, and where people might have a bugbear with the tank is because the intra clip being four seconds means that people will like to, in auto loaders, just drive in front of someone, drop the whole clip, and then run away. In the shot, you're not going to do that. And you are going to get wrecked very easily because by the time you've dropped all four shells someone's probably penned you twice and then you've lost a lot of the hit points that you need to be able to then sweep up like you normally would in an auto loader it's one that you've really got to be clever and timely with your shells it's got a 2.7 second aim time which is a little bit painful not gonna lie it's one that does feel a little bit too much 
But it's a drawback of the tank. And the tank does need drawbacks. That 2.7 second aim time is a little bit long. You will feel it. But then if you, with your 4 second intra clip. And if you are sat stationary. Firing your gun. That 2.7 second aim time actually isn't too bad really. 32 rounds is not enough. You will... I, I wouldn't say you'd often run out of rounds, but there are a lot of situations where you could run out of rounds, and 32 is not enough. I'd say you'd probably need about 40, maybe 44 rounds, something like that, just so you don't have that option of running out of rounds. It's a little bit too little in terms of that, so you've just got to be aware, and you've got to be aware with your ammo choices as well, because like for me, I run five clips of standard and four clips of premium. And I have run out of standard quite a lot, but the way, obviously, sometimes you don't fire your whole clip, you might reload a single, you might reload, and then you get into the situation where you are loading for 34 seconds or something like that, when I've got it fully pimped, for one shell, and that is frustrating. But yeah, that 32 rounds is not enough, you definitely need more. 8 degrees of gun depression is really nice, it means you can work a ridgeline really well. 0.38 accuracy is not great, but you can buff that up with the gun stabiliser and the gun perks which is fine and it means the accuracy is okay but that does derp a little bit here and there and you will feel it you'll probably see it in some of the replays as well it will derp the odd shot which can be a bit frustrating especially with the long with the fairly long reload and the intra clip but yeah it is what it is again drawbacks 140 millimeters of turret armor 90 on the side of the turret and 30 on the back let's have a quick look at the armor of this tank so here is the shot with its armor yeah, don't get anywhere near derp guns. Derp guns are going to hurt you massively, okay? If a derp gun catches you, you are going to hurt. The new Type 5 and Type 4 heavy gun, well, I say it's new. I mean, the new damage on it. They will pen you up and pen twice by Type 5s. Yeah, it's not very fun in this thing. It gets hurt quite badly. So this hull armor is tragic. You can side scrape in it. For Mr. Side Scrape, that's what I'm thinking of here. Because it does have the armour, but the turret does overhang the hull a little bit. So you just got to be wary that they can catch there if you do decide to side scrape. But honestly, if you're trying to side scrape in this tank, there's probably something gone wrong somewhere with how you're playing it. Because you want to be playing it as a midline support medium, you know, where you drop the clip. But you're not really in the direct line of fire all that often. When you go in hull down, if we were to use the full gun depression of this tank, the armour on the turret is... Not great for tier 9, but if you are top tier in a tier 8 situation, you can bounce stuff on this turret. It's not going to be very reliable, and I can't recommend that you go hull down and sit in front of people expecting to bounce, because you won't. But it can, but you pick your targets that you're going to go hull down against, because tier 9s are going to rip this thing to shreds if you do do that. You want, Because of the angling on it, you will pull off the odd ricochet, but yeah... So it's not like having a Lorraine turret where everything will pen it. It's not the case. Because of angling and that, it will bounce the odd shot. But just, yeah, just be aware of that. that it, it's kind of a bit cheesy. 30 degrees a second traverse speed on the turret is a bit slow. So, again, just be aware of that. That If you try to go around someone, sometimes the turret will not keep up with the hull at times. So, yeah, like I say, just, just be aware of that. Because of the 36 degrees a second traverse speed on the hull as well. So you are going turning faster than your turret can. So like I say, just be aware that if you're going around someone that your your turret will have to catch up with the hull sometimes. But over the view range, 620 horsepower. It doesn't seem like much horsepower. But because the tank is very, very light, you get a 22.96 horsepower per tonne. Which means that you do reach that 60 kilometers an hour top speed very easily. And that is very, very nice. The 20 kilometers an hour top reverse speed as well is great. That means you can, if you make a mistake and you go, oh, that's a lot of tanks, you can reverse around a corner pretty quickly. You're not going down really slowly like 10 kilometers an hour or 12 or 13 or 14. That is really slow. 20 is fine. 10% fire chance as well is quite nice because that means that that's a very low chance of you ever getting set on fire, which is great. And you add that perks to that maybe or well you don't even need really perks i've not been set on fire yet in the like 10 or 15 games i've played that's a nice fire chance for that terrain resistances are also pretty decent as well which means that you're just going to reach that top speed great 
Honestly, this tank is a pretty nice tank. I've enjoyed it. It has got drawbacks. I, w I don't know if I'd call it OP. I, 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 it's not OP, I don't think. I think it's pretty balanced so far. This initial opinions, obviously, only playing 10, 15 games so far and having not seen too many on the battlefield yet to have faced them to know how annoying it is. Honestly, I think the intra clip and the reload balances it out, as well as the gun being a little bit derpy here and there. It's not great at firing on the move all that much. So it negates a lot of the annoyances that could happen with fast tanks with autoloaders, right? But yeah, for 17.5k gold, that's still too much for any tank. I would always recommend waiting for a discount for this thing. But yeah, so as always, everybody, I'm going to send you to the garage where we're going to go over the the crew setup and the equipment loadout. And I'll see you there. So here we are in the garage with the Shah Future 4. And honestly, this is a very good looking tank. I absolutely love the look of this tank. It's a fabulous looking machine. It's one that I saw when it came on PC and I was like, you know, I love the look of that tank. I cannot wait to have it in my garage. It's great. So what I'm going to do first while we're here is show you, because it does come with a hero skin or, well, yeah, a hero skin. I'm going to show you the hero skin. This is it indeed. There's They've cut, you can see where they've cut the sleeve, the gun sleeve for the MOEs. I don't think it's that bad looking, but I, is it worth 3,000 gold? No, that is not worth 3,000 gold in the slightest. So this is why I always say wait for the base bundle as well, because the top bundles is overinflated for having stuff like the commanders and this 3D skin. You're better off just to pay the 200 and 50 gold or whatever it's 225 gold to have different camos on it rather than pay the 3k gold for that because i'm not a fan of that i mean like i say you might be a fan of that that's why i'm showing it off to you to see if you do like it or not but for me it's not worth the 3k gold it doesn't look great but yeah let's have a look at my commander setup for this tank so it's it's a pretty generic sort of help the gun be a little bit less derpy, but at the same time try and help the stealth of the tank, medium tank setup that I have. This is, a, like I said, this is, tends to be a very generic crew for me in any medium tank that has good camo, but also needs just that little bit of help with its gun. So I run Born Leader, Rapid Reload, Sixth Sense, Situational Awareness, Trap Mechanic, Steady Aim, Run and Gun, Camouflage Expertise, Muffled Shot. Now, born leader, obviously, because 10, making your crew 10% better is better. 10% on your, on your reload for a rapid reload. That's basically a gun rammer for an autoloader, which is great. Six cents, because you always want to know when you're spotted, especially a tank that's very unarmored. Situational awareness, make your view range as good as possible, obviously. Track mechanic, to stop any of those situations where you're going to get perma-tracked. Because... There's going to be lots of situations where you're going to end up burning your repair kit and then someone's going to track you instantly again. Or you're going to burn, burn your repair kit on uh, engine damage or ammo rack damage. And then as soon as you burn that, and it happens all the time, you'll end up getting tracked again. And then people will perma-track you very easily. So that's why I run Trap Mechanic, even though there's reusable re repair kits. Steady aim and run and gun, because obviously you want to make your gun 10% better. Well, stationary and just on the move generally. And camouflage up to see some muffled shot. Now, muffled shot obviously is broken still at the minute. Well, so as far as I'm aware, I've not seen it's been fixed yet, but I'm not too sure. But for longevity's sake of the video, when they actually do fix that, that is something you're going to want. Camouflage expertise obviously making your camo better making that really good camo even better. And then the muffled shot will help you and you'll see that in one of the replays. Where you can pull back behind a bush and then keep firing and not get spotted. And that will be really helpful. But that, that's why I run those crew skills on this tank. In terms of my equipment, I run optics to make the view range even better. As good as you can because using the camouflage mixed with the view range to be able to spot out and get assistance is great. Gun stabilizer because the gun is derpy and you want to have that 20% better accuracy. You really want to help with that because 0.38 accuracy can be a bit of a pain. And making that accuracy 20% better is des definitely something that this tank wants. The advanced concealment is another one that you definitely... I feel like, I feel like this slot is personal opinion, to be honest. Because I run advanced concealment because I want to make the camo of this tank dirty levels. 
because that helps me to drop the clip and not take hits because I can take flanking positions, sit in bushes, fire away at people and not get spotted. Whereas I will probably get spotted if I don't run the camo net. But you could quite easily make this thing even quicker by running the powertrain or the traction system. And to be honest, you could run the traction system because the power to weight on this tank is fantastic. So you could get the tank up to 66 kilometers an hour very easily so you could do that to make it that little bit quicker if you want it to be quicker you could also run vents just to make your view range your gun performance your dpm just that little bit better as well or because it's 2.7 aim time is quite long you could run the advanced gun lane drive just to make your aim time better by 12 percent that one is i'd say is down to personal preference of how you want to play the tank to be quite honest but I run the camo, like I say, because I want to make the camo absolutely dirty on this tank. The one thing I didn't go over is the shell velocity. The shell velocity on the APCR rounds is 1,461, which is great. That means you don't have to leave the shells all that much. That's fantastic. 1,000 meters a second on the heat rounds as well. Like I say, you got that four-second intraclip as well, which is painful. It's not exactly eight degrees of gun depression, like they say. It's actually seven and a half degrees of gun depression. That's quite random. That that is a thing like that, but it is what it is. And as you see, we've got 0 0.34 accuracy on this gun with the gun perks on it with the steady aim. That's what we get down from 0 0.38 to 0 0.34. Adding the stabilizer, you're probably looking at like 0 0.3 accuracy, which is great. And yeah, that is the tank, basically. It's a great looking tank. I've really enjoyed playing it myself. I think it's very solid. Worth 17.5k gold? No. But, if you get the chance to pick up this tank up on discount, I think it's definitely worth it. But anyway, I'm going to send you over to the replays where we have four replays for you. Yeah, four. Lucky you. And you can make your mind up by watching that. You might be thinking, oh my god, this tank looks sick. What is this guy on about? This is definitely worth 17.5k gold. Or you might be able to watch it and go, this guy is talking a load of crap. That tank doesn't look very, very good. That's not for me. So as everybody, as always, everybody, I will see you in the replays. So here we are in the replays with the shot, and yeah, is as you can see as we're going along here. I mean, we're all going a little bit downhill. It's pretty damn manoeuvrable, and like I say, so far, so good really for me in this tank. I've been enjoying it a hell of a lot. The mobility is great. Like I say, the camo is fantastic. It's really good for a lot of situations. I think it's the next replay. And like I say, with the replays we've got at the minute, we've got four replays for you. Not not a tank of gameplay. I think there's three first classes and one second class. It's been one of those times with it where I've not quite, might, quite managed to get the ace. But the gameplay we've got is good enough for it to show it off. Show you the strengths of it. A bit of the weaknesses. This clip coming up and out doesn't happen. You're imagining it. Don't just ignore the shots. We get one into the T100LT. The first one missed. And then, uh, yeah, that was a bad shot. Don't know why I took that. And just aim properly. And, oh, no. But that one was a bit unlucky. Because, actually, that was aimed at the back of the guy. And it still just hit the building next to him. But here's the reload. We're, we're popping it with food to make it as good as possible. And we're just waiting for the reload to come in. The standard B above us has pushed into a position that's quite aggressive. And I don't want him to come up and start dumping his clip in. I'm just waiting for this reload to go in before I move up to try and attack him. We know there's this standard B. We spotted a 50B going up into the position on the right as well. So I don't want to push up any further on there because I'm expecting him to be there. But here we go. 34.8 seconds on the reload. I'm not sure if that was the full reload with the food boost or whether that was actually just... A bug with the indicator which can happen where that is the reload just without boosting it but we get managed to get a couple of the shells in we managed to get what three of the shells in there two into the 268 version 5 which is nice and instead of waiting and firing that one shell we're just going to do the full reload here and get a full clip in because the likelihood is it's not going to be worth taking a hit to deal that one shell of damage we want it if we're going to take a hit we want to be able to deal a good chunk of it so we're just reloading the clip so that next tank we go in and attack we'll be able to do a good you know we'll have to do like 1600 damage with into hopefully so now we are loaded we're going to get a shot into the side of the machine now we've got this m46 pattern we're going to hopefully track him in place which he really isn't bothered about us we've managed to get that tracking shot in 
And thankfully, since we are an autoloader, we can actually still keep him permatract. We accidentally burned the food there, which I didn't mean to do that early. I don't know why I pressed it, but hey-ho. And yeah, luckily we managed to keep that guy tracked and get some damage onto him. So we're up to 3.2k damage, which is nice. And um, we're just waiting for the reload now to be able to keep helping. The problem with this reload and this intraclip, intraclip is, is that if games are a little bit quick and go by quite quickly in front of you, there can be games where you won't get anything done because you just can't drop the clip quick enough to help the team. And that is a bit of a pain. Unfortunately, we rushed the shot there on the machine and ricochet off his turret. The WZ120 manages to get in front of us and get a shot into our tracks, which is really irritating. And now we're just going to watch that corner and see if he gives us another chance. The M46 pattern is looking like he's trying to get a shot at us as well, which we're not going to do. We're looking for the shot at that 120, but we can't quite see it. And we're just playing the patient game, because that's what this tank is about. We spot a light tank is coming in behind, it's an HMTV. We managed to snap a shot there. Fortunately enough, that hit him, because we aimed fairly poorly there. And actually aimed to the left of him, and it still went in. We get a shot into the top of the machine's turret, which is nice. And we're going to try and get another one into the top of him there. But unfortunately, he moves away just in time. And now we're reloading again. And they've just killed my friend down there. I was kind of expecting either the machine or the medium tank... I think it's a 50B or standard B above to actually come rushing down this hill in front of us. So I run away while I'm reloading because I protect myself. There's no point sitting there if they're possibly going to do it while we are reloading because otherwise we're just going to take hits. But now we've got a T95 coming up. And it's like, you know what? Let's just hide behind the T95. Let him be the armor while he's climbing. And then we can reload. But this machine ends up over peaking here. We get a shot into his side, which is nice. Now we've got this 50B in front of us as well. We're going to pop over, get a shot into him. He gets a shot into us, but we pull back so that we make sure that we're not taking another hit. He hesitates as well after seeing the T95. And we're just going to go down and see if we can finish these guys off because they're both one shots now. Unfortunately, we just donk the first shot. We finish off the 50B and he's now covering the machine. I am reloading though, so that obviously that I'm not going to do anything else here. And we're just going to look at what the next set of options is to attack because obviously the, the machine is now down there i'm never getting that guy he's just gonna finish off with a leopard one anyway so i'm thinking right where's the next tank i want to get a clip into we've got the t62a down here but i'm possibly not going to get a shot into him and there's camp fans are over there i don't want to go around this corner while that 62a is still alive because obviously he could deal a shot of damage to me if he does that then i go against the camp panzer the camp panzer could then finish me off which would be well, it'd be painful, but we've actually made the mistake, and this is what I was talking about earlier on with the lack of ammo, right? We've managed to use all four or five clips, and yeah, mistakes were made. We've reloaded for 34 seconds just to have one shell of APCR, and unfortunately, the shell derped and went to the far left of the reticle and missed him. So all of that reloading was for absolutely nothing. Oh, it's painful when that happens. And that's what I'm talking about with the ammo. If you had more ammo, that probably wouldn't have happened. But because I chose to reload one shell earlier on to save time, we ended up suffering that fate. So we finished with 4,700 damage, 477 assisted, 1,626 base XP, the first class. And yeah, a generally a very nice game for the shot future there. And it kind of showed what you, how you have to be. You have to be patient with it. You have to pick your moments. And that intra clip really does hold you back a little bit. But like I say, you've just got to pick and choose your fight. So this game on Westfield is the second game. And it's a very, very short game. And it's going to highlight what the tank can do with its camo. And how quite nice it is to be kind of like a light tank in a way. Because you can push the bushes on Westfield quite aggressively and get into an aggressive spotting position and not get spotted, and that is great. And this is why I like having the camouflage expertise with the camouflage net. And also, it will show how devastating the clip can be. So here we spot a 704 and a Tiger 1. We're going to pull back behind the bushes so that they're not opaque anymore, pull back through to keep them spotted, pull back now the intra clips in to keep to not get spotted while we're firing at this Tiger 1 and we're just going to dump into this guy and finish him off that, oh that poor little tier 7 tank we finish off the Tiger 1 they get 1500 damage out of that first clip which is great 
it's really nice to have the plus 20, minus 20 RNG again because, or I should say, the balanced RNG again. Because if we were pre-7.1.1, we probably wouldn't actually finish that Tiger 1. We'd have probably done like 1,400 damage and just been really disappointed. So it, having plus minus 20%, having a balanced RNG ratio is really good. So now this light tank's gone in on this 704 and I want to help him out. We're just waiting for the reload to go and we get a shot in to hopefully track him, but we don't quite do it. We do pen him though. We do get the tracking shot into the 704, which is nice. We managed to pen him again. Unfortunately, he finishes off our light tank, but we do finish off the 704. His sacrifice wasn't in vain, that dragon, and we'll take it. We're up to 20, 2700 damage, and now we're going to move up and get under this TD's gun line. Hopefully, we're spotting up a little bit, and maybe they get shot by our friends. But we've boosted our reload with food, and we're now just going to wait before we poke up to be able to dump our clip. But unfortunately, the SU-130PM has come up and spotted us there, which is really kind of awkward, because I was hoping to be sneaky and, well, just sneak up on them, basically. But this C-54 Lightweight's been spotted in behind. It's like, right, okay, I want to help get rid of this guy. We get one shot into him there, and thankfully our friend finishes him off. And now we've got three shells left. And this poor hapless Type 4 Heavy is just driving out sideways on. Absolutely why not? We get two in. And we're going to get the third in. And we're up to 4.2k damage. Just like that. Really nice. And we're just going to wait for the reload again. Which is like, yeah, 33, 34 seconds. Something like that. It's not, to be honest, the reload at 33, 34 seconds is not bad. For 1600 clip. Especially on a really mobile medium tank. That's got the ability to be incredibly flexible. I mean, you consider there's obviously tanks like the T-41, which has a 33 second base reload as a medium tank. Now, since it's been buffed, it was 36 before that, and that does dump the clip really quickly. But it's not got very, it's not very mobile, and the armor on it is lackluster a little bit. So right there, we actually ended up auto aiming at the SU-130PM, shooting him, ignoring the light tank, ramming him. Finishing him off, and now we're getting shot into the Black Prince, and we finish that going 5.8k damage. But yeah, that tank puts out its damage really quickly, but it's not as flexible as this tank. This tank can flank really well, it's got the camo to be to be able to spot. It's really nice. So we finish that game with two kills, 5.8k damage, 179 assistance, sniper medal, high caliber. Like I said, that game was really, really quickly. Their team just folded like, like nothing, really. But it was a really nice game for the tank. It kind of showed off what this tank can do with its camo rating, though, because the camo rating on this tank can be, like I say, absolutely dirty. So now we're on to the third game, and we're on... Let me think of the name. El Alamein. That's the one. That, that really rhymed. I, I'm a poet, and I just didn't know it. Look at that. Think of the name. El Alamein. Anyway, so we're going to go to the position at H4. On our main because from that position we can spot out and drop our clip and that's a position I do like to take with a lot of tanks if they have gun depression like this tank has with its seven and a half degrees so don't believe the stats it's definitely seven and a half degrees not eight yeah it's okay so fully pimped out with no food boost it's a 34.8 second reload there we go confirmed which like I say for 1600 clip isn't too bad and I actually think the four second intra clip on this tank makes you hesitate and stop and think. And I think that probably actually saves you a little bit of HP at times. Because there's sometimes you think, oh, I really want to go poke out and shoot this guy. But I've got to wait for this intra clip. And then you actually don't poke out and you don't end up taking a shot, which is quite nice. But like I say, you have to be patient with this tank. If you're not patient, you're gonna it's going to lead to your death. And you can't just pull out and sit there firing shell one after one after one after one at someone you have to fire and then think about what you're going to be doing with it so this 50b is pushed quite aggressively i was trying to see if we could get a shot at the 13105 as he came round him but i can't quite get that we were looking for a shot at the t95 v6 but couldn't quite see his capola and um, we're just looking and waiting we're being patient for that opportunity like i said the reload on this tank is long as well so you don't really want to waste too many shots we get a nice shot into the Type 59-2 there. And unfortunately, that's where the long intra clip came into play a little bit and screwed us over. And we managed to only get one shot into that Type 59-2 and we missed the other one. 
We actually got another shot into the SU-130PM there, and unfortunately, again, the, the long intra clip at four seconds cost us damage on the SU-130PM because he died. And with a fairly long reload as well, I'm holding on to this shell probably longer than I probably would do normally. I probably would, if any other tank, probably would have reloaded straight away, but it is what it is. We actually managed to see that we could get a shot at the Jagdpanzer on that crossing in the distance, but unfortunately we ended up ricocheting off his back as well. I think we just ended up, instead of hitting his side, just clipped the back end of his tank, and unfortunately it, it ricocheted and we didn't get anything off of it. But now I'm reloading, I'm thinking, what do I want to do now? I want to get into a position to get some flanking side shots at these guys. There's some heavy tank, there's a heavy tank moving up into the dunes on our left. We've got the 777 that we just spotted up there. But we can get up here and get shots at the E4 and the 277. But this 13105 comes in. We end up, we were aiming for his tracks there to track him in place. We ended up spinning him around, which made him miss his other shot. And then we had the 13105 come in and get a shot in. Now we're in the flanking position to get shots at these guys. We've got one into the side of the, two, the T110 E4 there. We get another one into the 777. Not 777, the 277, sorry. And then we finish off our clip into the other one there. And this guy looks like he's coming for his artillery. Shaves off most of our health there with a splash. That could have been game over if he'd hit us directly. And we're just getting out of dodge. We're not sticking around for that guy to just yellow over the top and finish us off. We're not doing that. We're up to 1,800 assistants as well, which is nice, because we were spotting like the 277, we were spotting the 777, and we've managed to get a healthy amount of assistance and damage. But now that 277's gone, there's a lot of 7's being said right now, now that he's gone, the base is the priority. There's still two artillery left, and there's four TDs. Three of the TDs were spotted towards our base, so there's no point pushing down the 1-2. We may as well go try and protect the base and hopefully get some damage out of these guys as they push in and try and take it so the t30 is spotted there in the gap there's another td progressing it's an e4 that is pretty healthy he's moving up towards the dunes on our right where our base is and i know that if he progresses any higher he's likely to give us a shot so we're just going to wait to see if we can get a shot into him and look at that he's delightfully pushing up we get a nice shot into his side and oh god he gets absolutely obliterated there Artillery tracked him in the perfect place. Death Star shot him. Oh, that was wonderful. Now we know that the Jag Panzer, which is dangerous, he is in this left hand lane. The T 30 is in the right hand lane. So we don't really, preferably, we don't want to drive in front of this Jag Panzer. We don't want to drive in front of the T 30. Because the T 30 is not a one shot either. We're a one shot for both of them. So what I'm actually going to do is come up here, stick to the left as much as possible so we're not getting proxy spotted by the T 30. And we're going to drive up behind this Jagdpanzer and hopefully deliver the surprise butt sex and get rid of the whole clip into his back. So we are successfully behind the Jagdpanzer. We're just going to drop this clip into it. Oh, it's so great when you can just do this. And we're just going to finish him off. And now there's just his other Jagdpanzer friend because he was in a platoon with another Jagdpanzer and two artillery left. We've done 3.6k damage, 2k assistance. It's 5.6k combined so far, which is really nice. And we're just going to go on the hunt. The Jagdpanzer, other one, gets spotted. And he's full health, which is great. We're going to go after this guy now. The only thing that could do us in right now is if artillery randomly appears and just splashes anywhere near, near us and destroys us. Unfortunately, we end up getting spotted there by the Jagdpanzer as we're coming over. Which is really annoying because he's now turning to face us. And it's like, okay, he's turned to face us. No, I'm not dealing with that. We're, we're just going to go this way and get around him but unfortunately i think because we're the only ones spotted right now he knows that's happening and yeah he's already facing us which means we cannot drive around that corner because we're just going to die this conway is full health though and he's, he doesn't care he drives around takes the thousand hit and now because of that conway's heroics we can actually just dump our clip into this jagdpanzer and finish him off well, unfortunately, we don't get to quite to get to finish him off. The Conway ended up getting shut down by the artillery, the poor guy. And we snap the shot on the move with RBRT into the T-92, but he gets finished off by the 50B. And we finished that game with a very nice total anyway. We didn't quite manage to get any kills. Well, we didn't quite manage to finish off kills there, but we got a nice amount of damage. We finished with 4.8k damage, 1 kill, 2k assisted, high caliber confederate, first class, 1665 base. A nice game. 
um, we, we had a couple of people in there that do follow the channel as well, like Prof Foodie and Pixel Reaper in there that had some decent games as well. And it was a really nice game on El Alamein. And now we're on to the last replay of the video. You've managed to get through the stats. You've managed to get through the garage. We've managed to get through three replays of this tank. You know, I had a lot of fun playing this tank. That's why there's four replays. They may not be ace tankers, but they're, you know, they're good enough to, descri to describe and show what the tank can do in good situations. And it's, it's some of the re and obviously some of the derpiness of the gun and stuff like that, you do see some of the bad points of the tank as well. But I enjoyed it that much that I thought this tank was worth giving you a, quite a lot of replays to have a look at and just to see how it performs and we're on the final game and this one is Prokhorovka which you'd think being a stealthy medium tank would be a very good map for it and it is and it, it's going to be a decent replay for it but unfortunately because we sat in that bush we kept moving which just kept negating our camo and yeah that was a bit of a bad play from me I pulled into the bush, I could have spotted that two line quite easily from inside that bush. But, because I kept moving, that meant it was destroying my camo, because it was giving me camo for movement instead of camo for stationary. And that meant that we ended up getting spotted by the light tank that pulled along the ridge, which was the Sheridan, and that was really unfortunate. But we've managed to fire two shots so far, we've penned one into the Sheridan, missed the other on the batch. We've got 552 assistants so far. And we're going to change to the other position that I do like to take, see if we can get another shot at someone. We snap a shot at the Batch at 12T, 20, 12T, 25T, sorry, into his turret, which is nice. And we've got one shell left in this clip. Now, I don't know if you saw that shell tracer, but that shell tracer from the artillery looked like it came from K3. So that's going to be in the back of my mind to know that he's not in a safe spot at K1. He's actually on the other side of the ridge line. That'll be in the back of my mind for later on when we go try and spot. Now we'll get a nice shot into the side of the WZ120 there, but we're not lingering. Because that was the last shot in the clip, we're now reloading and we're going to change up and keep moving so that we don't get slapped up by that artillery. And we just want to keep moving while we're reloading. And we're thinking, what do we want to do next? Where do we want to go? And I'm thinking, I'm probably going to push straight into the bowl to try and spot their K line. Because we know where the artillery was, like I say, we, we, we saw where that shell tracer possibly came from. I'm thinking, well, if it fires, I could possibly spot it. Plus, we've seen shell tracers from possible TDs down there. And I just want to try and spot those tanks. Because if we do, we're going to benefit from that greatly and get some good assistance. So we boost our view range with food. And there we go, there's the artillery. Unfortunately, the first one snapped, misses, because we couldn't get aimed in quick enough. We get another one into put him on half health and we're hoping to finish him off but he dips down just low enough and then we managed to avoid the death star shot which is great we get the shot straight through his lower plate which is great i'm just kind of sad there that we didn't get to finish off the artillery because that would have been fantastic we would have saved us a bit of pain if he starts to decide to try and shoot at us later on but fortunately, we've also managed to spot that Death Star, and we got a ton of assisted on him. We're up to 3.1k spotting now. We were spotting the Type 4, but we're only getting a little bit now. We actually end up spotting a Jagdpanzer as well. We're just going to sit in this bush. We're not very far away from that Type 4 either, which is quite nice to be able to get assistance on him. We do take the chance to finish off the WZ120 there because we don't want to leave him alive. I was going to try and shoot the Bat Chat, but I decided rather than waste the shell a blind shot there we're just gonna not do that but now we know exactly what's down this two line i'm just gonna go and spot them up because i want to push my assistance damage now to be as high as possible we end up getting splashed by artillery there it's really unfortunate that's what it's about with it saved us a bit of pain if we managed to finish them off unfortunately the egg panzer didn't sit on top of the ridge line for long enough so we're not getting loads of assisted on him which is sad but i've got to be careful because i don't want to attack those guys head on because if there's anything along the 7-6 line, it's going to hurt me if I do attack these guys. So I've just got to be a bit careful with pushing them because we're on for a good game at the minute. And I don't want to chance just being annihilated. But we are going to pop up. We're going to finish off this Death Star. Aim for his weak spot, which we to get in. We end up dodging a shell from behind. So it's like, okay, drop, 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 drop. And we've got one shell left in the clip and that bat chat it's got that bat chat written all over it i want to go pop this shot in and then we're gonna end up ducking down to avoid it we end up taking a big hit there from something sitting over there firing he 
did a serious amount of damage. That was like 910 damage. That's almost like something with 750 alpha fire and HE. But now we're reloading. We're actually just going to push forward in front of our team so we can get some assistance on these guys that are hiding under the train tracks and that. And we end up spotting a griller, and it must have been the griller firing HE that pend us with HE there that did that amount of damage. But we're getting some a little bit of assistance on these guys, which is nice. Waiting for the clips going, because look at this FV215B. He is the dream. He's just sat there sideways on, on unaware. We get one in. And then, like I say, this is where if we had a better intra clip, we'd be dropping this clip a lot quicker, getting the damage in so much faster. And he wouldn't have had as much time to react as he has. And unfortunately, the derpy gun handling there managed to put the shell high into his turret on that final shell. So we didn't quite get that one. Brooks, 4.3k assistance, 3.9k damage. We've got to reload the shells into the clip now. I don't want to push and get spotted and get finished off by this FV. But now he's turning his attention. We're going to see if we can get towards this FV4005 before we get the clip in. But unfortunately, the FV215B gets finished off. And then the 4005 gets finished off. But we finished that game with a great total for the Shah anyway. Epic victory. we come top. We've got two kills, 3.9k damage, 4.3k assist. That's like 8k combined, 8.3k combined, something like that. Really nice game for the Shah Future 4. And it's, it's a tank that I've really, really enjoyed playing. Is it worth 17.5k gold? No. Wait for a discount, massively. But is it a lot of fun? Yes, it can be. It does take a little bit of patience to play it, a little bit of skill to get the most out of it, but it is good. So as always, everybody, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. A great success!